Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to another lecture given by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. First of all, this is a school and not a church, and we're not associated with any church organization, Jehovah Witnesses, or any other denomination that you have taught in the world today. Now, this school was founded in the year of 1931 by Dr. Henry C. Kinley, who had a divine vision and revelation direct from Yahweh. And the charts that you see pictorially illustrated are results of that divine vision and revelation. We have branch schools operating throughout the United States, also schools operating in various countries throughout the world. Now, we'll be explaining the name you see here. Now, Yahweh is the true name of our Heavenly Father, which was once laid down in the scriptures. We have Yahweh symbolized as a cloud on this chart because Yahweh symbolized himself as a cloud in many passages of your Bible. We have the cloud extending all around the edge of the chart so that everything on the chart is within the cloud. Just as everything that exists exists within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now in this pure spirit state, Yahweh has no descriptive shape or form in which he is the ultimate source and substance, the limits and the bounds of everything that exists. Now when your translators has come across the true name of our Heavenly Father Yahweh, they have you then inserted the English title, Lord. Yahweh now taking on a superincorporeal shape and form within himself is known as Elohim. Now superincorporeal means without physical flesh and blood. And in this state Yahweh Elohim can only be seen in a divine vision and revelation as stated in Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Then when Moses, Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel and they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now remember they saw Elohim in a divine vision and revelation. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct divine title for Yahweh in shape and form known as Elohim, they have usually inserted the English title, God. Yahweh Elohim now manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Joshua the Messiah, as stated in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. And in the 14th verse, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when your translators has come across the true and correct original Hebrew name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, they have usually inserted false and erroneous names, such as Jesus Christ. But remember, Yahweh in pure spirit as the Father, Yahweh in a superincorporeal shape and form known as the Word of Son is Elohim, and Yahweh manifested in a physical body as the Savior of the world is Yahshua the Messiah. Yahweh in his two manifestations, but one spirit, as stated in 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three or one. Now, my investigation on your part will prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the name and title we teach here are true and correct, but that the names and titles that you have taught in the world are false and erroneous. For an example, look up the letter J. It is not and never has been in any part of the Hebrew language. It did not come into existence in any language prior to the Middle Ages. Therefore, such names as Jehovah and Jesus are impossible renders of our Heavenly Father's true name, Yahweh, and his son, Yahshua the Messiah. Our aims. The primary constitutional objectives of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, sex, creed, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called laws of nature and powers laden in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures compared to religion, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And night to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. 
and tent to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have a prayer by Mr. Trail Johnson, a song selection and scripture lesson by Ms. Shirley Cole. Scripture lesson be Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. by our hearts and minds for prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father Yahweh, we thank you to be able to assemble in this manner and praise your holy name. <clears throat> and Father, we ask that you open our eyes and ears, our spiritual eyes and ears, and give us a willing heart to accept the truth that you have prepared for us before the world even was. And Father, these blessings we ask in your son's name, Yahshua Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah.
Good morning. Scripture lesson for today's class will be Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name versions of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association Incorporated. Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter. Again, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet, and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the people from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and pine away in them, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Say unto them, As I live, saith Yah Yahweh, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? Mm -hmm. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say, The way of Yahweh is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness, and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. 
Yet say ye, yet ye say, the way of Yahweh is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you every one after his ways. And it came to pass in the twelfth year of our captivity, in the tenth month, in the fifth day of the month, that one that had escaped out of Jerusalem came unto me, saying, The city is smitten. Now the hand of Yahweh was upon me in the evening, afore he that was escaped came, and had opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning. And my mouth was opened, and I was no more dumb. Then the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land is given us for the land is given us for inheritance. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith Yah Yahweh, Ye eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes toward your idols, and shed blood, and shall ye possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword to work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife, and shall ye possess the land? Say thou thus unto them, Thus saith Yah Yahweh, As I live, surely they that are in the waste shall fall by the sword, and him that is in the open field will I give to the beast to be devoured, and they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am Yahweh, when I have laid the land most desolate, because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from Yahweh. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice, and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. First speaker for this morning lecture will be Mr. Roderick Collins. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm thankful to stand before you and have another testimony of Yahweh. And to truly express my gratitude for this gospel being poured upon me and the sons. And uh, I knew I was going to be called because Yahweh has had some things that he's been working with me with and I can truly say that it has brought a peace in my life at this time despite everything that is going on seemingly right within me and that is the mercy of the father that when you feel like you're catching hell 
that he speaks right within you mm -hmm. and there is peace. That's right. And that is the beauty of this gospel that in times of turmoil that is what it accomplishes, peace. And I want to start off with the first aim of our school and that is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists and you have to take a look at what that means because in order for you to come to this gospel this is the first objective that you have to accomplish and we often say that this is a school and this is not a church. So you know as you go through school, in the classes that you have, they have objectives that you have to accomplish in order to proceed to the next level. And it's no different with this gospel because see, you can't come calling him by any other name. His name is and always will be Yahweh. Right. It has been for all of eternity. There's no dispute in that. And so now, once you come to a realization that this is your creator's name, you can't stop there. All right. There are some things that you have to investigate and you have to find out that is going to make this real with you. Mm -hmm. right. Because, see, you can meet me and I can tell you my name is Todd. And as long as you don't do any investigation, guess what? That's what you're going to believe. Right. So now, the people out there in the world, they were told that their Heavenly Father's name is God or Lord. And they've never done any investigation into that fact. And so that's what they believe. Right. But we're here today telling you that the name of your heavenly father is Yahweh. All right. And we can back it up and we can prove it. Mm -hmm. that's right. That's right. Now, knowing that your heavenly father's name is Yahweh, there are some things about that name and in, in, in the creator that you have to understand. Uh -huh. Give me John 424. For Yahweh is spirit, mm -hmm. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right, so now we're telling you that Yahweh is spirit. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you have to do is understand what spirit is. That's right. That's right. Spirit is. Or Yahweh encompasses his spirit in intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge. So now, those are the major attributes, along with love, beauty, justice, power, foundation, and strength, that make up the attributes of what Yahweh is. And so now, you are a living replica mm -hmm. of your creator. Mm -hmm. And so now, what does that mean for you? So if I'm telling you Yahweh is spirit and you must worship him in spirit and in truth in your spirit, guess what? Those same attributes have to abide right there within you. Go get it for me in... Uh, in Exodus. Exodus 31 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding mm -hmm. and in knowledge. Okay. So. I have called by name Bezalel. That's right. See, in order for you to come to this gospel, mm -hmm. you have 
to have been called before the foundation of this world. And if you're a son and you've been called, those same attributes are going to abide right there within you. So now Yahweh is saying he have filled him with the spirit of Elohim. Wisdom, knowledge, intelligence, understanding, read, in the Holy Spirit, right? Go to Isaiah for me and pick it up. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of Yahweh. So see, there it is again, right? So anytime that a son is called, this is what they have to be filled with. Because, see, the Spirit is going to do nothing but testify of itself. That's right. That's right. So any son that you come across are going to display these attributes. It can't be anything else. Right? And so now, this day and time, Yahweh still pointing out the sons. And they are filled with knowledge and wisdom and intelligence. What? In the Holy Spirit. So that's all they're going to testify to because they can't speak of nothing else. This is how you see the sons. So now, the name of the Father is Yahweh. You must, He is Spirit. You must worship him in spirit and in truth, right? We've given you examples of what that spirit is. So now, in this story that Yahweh has told over the years, every example in, throughout this story points up to knowledge, wisdom, intelligence, right. understanding. So now you have to get in there and you have to see yourself operating through this pattern. So now, <laughs> give me, um, hmm. we might as well start from the beginning. Go to, uh, Genesis, and we're going to bring it down. Um, I want what well, Yahweh made the man in his image. Genesis 1.26, and Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Oh, right there. So Yahweh created the man in his image. Right. Right? So now, Understand what that's talking about. It's not talking about this physical body. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about his makeup. And he's telling you, let us make man in our likeness and our image. Who is the us that he's talking about? He's talking about the source and the substance, right? So now, Yahweh created Adam from the dust of the earth and stepped into that body and breathed in the breath of life. And Adam, or from Adam, Yahweh made Eve. 
right? He took the womb from the man and made the womb man. So now, Adam walked and talked with Yahweh daily. But it wasn't like I'm walking and talking with Trail, you know what I'm saying, from a physical standpoint. This was right here in Adam's conscience. And see, this is how you have to communicate with Yahweh now. Nothing has changed. So, Adam walked and talked with Yahweh daily. And so Yahweh, give me where um, Yahweh gave Adam the commandment. 2.13. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, say, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Understand. Understand the commandment now. Read it again so we make sure we're clear on what was told to Adam. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, say, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. So, but of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you shall not eat. Mm -hmm. So we clear on the commandment, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, once that commandment was given, that gave rise to that adversary. Mm -hmm. Because now he has something that he can oppose. Right. Because we've, we've read it in uh, Revelations where that, that devil or that adversary was already cast into the earth plane. But because he had no opposition, he had no life. And it wasn't until opposition came that that gave rise to that adversary. Right? So now, pick it up um, where the adversary is talking to Eve. Third chapter. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Hath Elohim said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, mm -hmm. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm -hmm. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay, so now, do y'all see what that adversary did? Mm -hmm. So first thing, and we're not going to take anything for granted here. Look up the definition of subtle. That adversary is good in what he does. Cunning mm -hmm. or crafty. Okay. Skillful, clever, or ingenious. Mm -hmm. Got anything else? Mm -hmm. We'll take it at that. Cunning, crafty, skillful, meaning he knows exactly how to twist what Yahweh said around and make you believe it. Has done it for generations. What you got? The definition is insid insidious in operation. Mm -hmm. And insidious means intended to entrap or beguile. See? He know what he's doing. He's trying to trap you. Beguile. Because he wants to take your soul. That is his job. That's right. And so he's going to use every trick that he has to deceive you. So now, what did he tell Eve? Read it again. And the woman... Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh Elohim had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman... Hath Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Hold on, we're going to break it down, and we're going to take our time with it. Hath not Elohim said, you may not eat of every tree in the garden? Now, is that what Yahweh said? No. Mm -hmm. He said, you may freely eat mm -hmm. of every tree in the garden. Mm -hmm except mm -hmm. the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Mm -hmm. I should not eat of it. So now, 
that adversary twisted or, or used a play on words to deceive Eve. Read. Had Elohim said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the mm -hmm. tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay, so now, she knew the commandment. Where was she when the commandment was given? She was right there in the man, right? So she understood exactly what Yahweh commanded. So now, that adversary deceived Eve and she partook of the transgression, right? So now, Adam sinned what Eve did willfully, willfully partook of the transgression. And you have to find out what that's talking about. That is Yahweh willfully coming down, so to say, giving up his life for his bride, which is us. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. All right, so now, pick it up where Yahweh is talking uh, after he uh, comes to Adam and asks him what have they done. Oh, six verse. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Stop, 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 stop for a moment. <laughs> So y'all, y'all, you'll hear what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. This adversary deceived her, got her looking at things, and it says that is what pleasant, pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, desired to make one wise. So now, are these carnal attributes? See, now he's got her looking away from the big picture. Because, see, she knows the commandment, right? She knows it. But, see, that's how that adversary plays with you. Because he takes your focus away from Yahweh and he makes you start looking with those physical eyes. And so now she saw that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was desirous. Ain't that what we do? <laughs> I want that. Right? Not knowing what Yahweh has intended for you, you just want what you want. Because see, now you stop using or you're not allowing the spirit of Yahweh to guide you. You're letting that carnal mind take over. Right. And that's what's guiding you now. Right. See, the adversary is sitting on the throne. And he knows how to pull your string just like old puppet master. He's going to place those things from a physical standpoint that mean the most to you. That you desire the most. Your heart's desire. And he's going to dangle those things right there in front of you. What are you talking about? Your kids. Your mama, your daddy. This new car that I want. You got one. Right? It might not be the best, but it gets you from A to B. Right? And with the prices gas is now, why you want that on top of, of a, a gas bill? So this is what the adversary does, right? So now, keep reading. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Mm -hmm. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked. Okay, so now, 
the eyes of both of them were open. So you're telling me that their eyes were not open before? Why did they not know that they were naked? Right? Because, see, they were covered in the Holy Spirit. There is no physical when the Holy Spirit is running things. But now what happened is when they partake of the fruit, they fail where? In their conscience. So now there's a veil there now. As before, they were one with Yahweh. So now there's a blocker there. And now they're not one with Yahweh because the carnal mind. Mm. And we've read that the carnal mind is at enmity or at war mm -hmm. against Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Right? So now read. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now I got and to cover myself. When you out there acting a the fool, you trying to hide. See how this correlates? When that adversary has you out there acting a the fool and doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, the first thing you want to do is cover it up. Or you want to hide. Read. And they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim as they were walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh Elohim amongst the trees of the garden. See, you're ashamed. And you're ashamed. When Yahweh gets to calling those things out right there within you, you're ashamed. You're embarrassed. And like I said, you're trying to cover up or cover the things that you've done. Read. And Yahweh Elohim called unto the man and said unto him, mm -hmm. Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, <laughs> and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told and you you were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, mm -hmm. she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh Elohim said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, mm -hmm. thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. Upon thy belly shall thou go, mm -hmm. and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And I will put image <coughs> between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. He shall bruise thy heel, head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Okay. Uh, so... Yahweh asked Adam why did he partake and Adam explained to him that you know the woman gave me the fruit Yahweh went to the woman and asked her why did she partake of the fruit and she explained that the adversary or the devil beguiled her that's, what, that's why we looked it up earlier he tricked her because of his play on words Right? And she started looking at it with the carnal mind. That's how he was able to get to her. And so now, when Yahweh went to that adversary, he didn't ask him anything because you have done this. See, Yahweh know what he created that adversary for. And that adversary knows his job very well. And so if I if I created you and I know what I intended your purpose to be, there's no reason for me to ask you why you're out there doing the things that you're doing, because this is why I created you. Right. And so now what happened is 
the man fell in his conscience. And that covered every man from that point on to down to the Messiah. Every man died under Adam. Right? And so now, what this gospel does is it brings you to an understanding and it shows you how we have to accomplish getting back to where we came from. And that is being one with our Heavenly Father again. And so now, in this pattern, we've learned that there has to be a death. And there has to be a burial. And it has to be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. And there has to be a three. Mm -hmm. Also, we've learned that there has to be blood, water, spirit, 40. Mm -hmm. And when you're picking these things up, you're seeing how eternal life has already been given to you. You just have to master the objectives mm -hmm. in order to proceed. This trip that Israel took when they started in Canaan land and by way of the famine, they come down into Egypt and they were in bondage for a period of 400 years to where Yahweh brought them up by a mighty hand, brought them through the Red Sea, out here in the wilderness. All of those people that were out there died off because of disobedience. 144,000 men crossed over into Jordan back into Canaan land. When you add that up, that equals nine. That means complete. Mm -hmm. So now, what you're looking at is just a round trip. That's what's going on now. See, we started in spirit. In pure spirit. Yahweh came down, manifested himself to gather back everything that he is back into himself and reconcile back from whence it came. That is what this gospel does. It cleans you up and it prepares you for the glory that is to come. And it is such a glorious thing to let Yahweh guide your life. There is peace, there is joy, and there is happiness in the Holy Spirit. Even from a physical or a mental standpoint, if you're catching hell, there's peace. Because we know that we have a merciful, mm -hmm. merciful heir that has his hands covering the sons. Mm -hmm. I thank you for your time. I'm really grateful that Yahweh has continued to work with me and that he is allowing me to get into some things uh, and start to really just dig in and, and become anchored in this gospel. And with these few words, I thank you. May Yahweh continue to bless you. Next speaker will be Miss Dolores Tell. All right, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And I too am happy uh, to have a testimony of this gospel. 
and I have truly enjoyed the words of the previous speaker because our, I was just talking this morning and I said, now Yahweh, you know how I feel like I'm all over the place. I feel like I'm losing ground. And that's what this gospel does for us. It gives us, uh, give me Isaiah 33 and 6. Isaiah 33 and 6. Mm -hmm. And wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. shall be the stability of thy times mm -hmm. and strength of salvation. All right, it says wisdom and knowledge shall be. But we know that now in these perilous times, it is mm -hmm. the strength of our salvation. And that it's not, and what do we look, what, what, what is the wisdom? It was just gone over and showed us too that wisdom and knowledge is an attribute or it is that thing that attributes or let's look up attribute, look up the word attribute. <coughs> Or it's the it's that that describes. Mm -hmm. To consider as a quality or characteristic mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. To regard as produced by originating. It's a quality. Something attributed as belonging to a person, thing, a quality, a character characteristic mm -hmm. or property. It just describes what Yahweh is himself. It's not a physical thing. Nothing, something is, it, it, you can't hold it in your hand. It has to become an integral part of you. And that's what the first aim, like the previous speaker was tell, showing us, that the first aim of the school is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. And we've, it's been gone over to show us that Yahweh is wisdom and intelligence. And that is what stabilizes us in these perilous times. Now, Yahweh Show, told us, he didn't tell us it was going to be easy. Mm -hmm. That you have to fight with everything that's in you to continue to be stable, to be stabilized in this thing because, see, you can't get comfortable. Yahweh's not trying to make it comfortable for his sons in this world. And that's what we have to understand. You're going to be tried on every side. Yahweh gave us this uh, mosaic track back here. How that the children of Israel, who were his chosen people, right? He, this seed was given unto Abraham back here from the very beginning. And that, that, that he told him that he was going to come down into a land that was not theirs, right? See, this world does not belong to the sons of Yahweh. You can't get comfortable in it. And if you are comfortable, you better rethink it. You better look at it again because this world was set up to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And if you are a part of the world, if you take part in the quality of this world, you will be destroyed. But Yahweh said that he is divine wisdom and intelligence. And that's what we are seeking after because Yahweh has shown us over and over, like I said, starting back here with uh, Egypt the children of Israel. They went down here into the land and they were placed in bondage for a period of 400 years. They were tried on every side. And down here, they Yahweh set up a taskmaster, these taskmasters, to try them and to, to trouble them. Just like right now, our taskmasters, that we are our thoughts. Mm -hmm. Just how that the previous speaker was showing us how that we begin to think all. Uh, begin to think. Yeah, you begin to think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then and they come so strong. And that's what I was telling my, my child this morning. I said, these thoughts just keep coming to me. Just, and that's, what that that's how the adversary comes to you. He's so subtle. Well, so cunning and crafty and get you fixated on what's going on, what might be going on, or pull just to pull you out and cause you to not focus on what's what's really real. This is Yahweh's purpose. And Yahweh was trying to speak to me.
in that same light. Uh, yes. And trying to steal me right there within myself right. to let me know this is my purpose. Mm -hmm. This is my plan. This is my pattern. And in my timing. So what you have to do is fight with everything that's in you. And it's a fight yes, right. to the finish, to the end. It is truly a fight to try to control these thoughts and all this that you think is going on. What? Yes. It's a fight to the finish. And I'm telling you, you have to be armored up. All right. Give me Ephesians. And I'm telling you, and I'm thankful. I, I, knew, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. Because it was coming so fast, so much. And I said, Yahweh, you got to help me. I, I was praying this morning, and I was talking, and I said, Yahweh, you got to help me. And... Y'all just showed me the other day, I was listening to another class, and I was expressing this the other day, over in Revelations, where, is it Revelations, the 12th chapter, chapter where it talks about uh, the only way we are overcome is by testimony. Yes. And Yahweh showed me that. I could have screamed. And I said, I, this was a scripture I was looking for a long time ago, and I never could find it. And then Yahweh brought it back to my remembrance. See, you can't be ashamed of testifying of me. Because that is how you are able to overcome. And if you don't have a testimony, if you, and the only way you can have a testimony is that you've been tried. You had to experience some things. You had to go through some things. Not to say that that's going to be the only thing you're going to be you going to be tried over and over and over until whose right it is to sit on that throne. And the throne that Yahweh was showing me is right there in your conscience. You have to be ever conscious of his presence. And then it was so beautiful and I thank you. And that's why I say you can't be ashamed of no testimony. Because if you don't have nothing to testify to, that means you're comfortable and you like what you're going through. You're good. You know what I'm saying? You have to have a testimony of the truth. Because the only, what is the truth? It's the knowledge and understanding of Yahweh. See, that's what Yahweh is taking us through these things so that we can have a testimony. So that we can show him and be grateful that he has in the midst of all the chaos that we are going through that he has already saved us because you can't have a testimony unless you've been experienced in some things you can't you have to be there you have to be there and the only way that you are there is that you're conscious because you see what Yahweh is doing how he's oh. thank you Yahweh thank you I love my father and a lot of times I don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can't talk about it. But I talk to him within myself. I can't openly put it into words. But I talk to him right there within myself. And I'm thankful. I am truly thankful. We can use these words lightly. But I'm telling you. When you see the glory of Yahweh operating right there within you. Because let me tell you something. These bodies. and Oh, this was another thing I was just saying too. How we are made in his likeness, in his image, right? And how that. It's a beautiful thing to see wisdom and intelligence and knowledge operating within you, right? And I was like, now Yahweh, help me to understand that. It's a beautiful thing to not to have to be conscious of how many times your heart has to beat. That's that's wisdom. That's all in, all intelligence because Yahweh has already set it up to where all you have to do is trust and believe in me. I got everything going. It, your heart is going to beat. The blood is going to flow. All of this. You don't have to worry about that. I got that going on. You see, that's that's intelligence because it, everything must obey. The blood has to go through one ventricle and through the atrium. You don't have to worry about that because that is me doing my will in you physically now. Now just look at it like this, spiritually so. 
I am the one that opened up your eyes of understanding, your physical eyes for you to wake up in the morning. I am the one that gives your legs the strength to walk. I am the one that walks right within you in your consciousness to help you see and understand what you, where you should go, where you should not go. Right there within your conscious. But he gives you feet, physical feet. All right, then just the other day we was talking about, I'm going everywhere, but catch it, get it, just take it in. Because I know this is Yahweh's will, and I know this is it's Yahweh's will. How we said that, oh, he saw men walking as trees, right? And that was so beautiful. How y'all was saying that cursed is every man that hangs up, hangs on the tree. You get hung up on the flesh. You're cursed. That beautiful. I said, look at that. I said, Yahweh, and it just, it's just so beautiful how that all these things that we keep hearing over and over, and when it fully takes form in your heart and mind and you become conscious that these are not just words. This is the spirit of Yahweh operate in you. And the only way you can connect is because of the unity of the spirit. Right. It has to come together. Right. It has to come together to bring forth. And you want to want to you want to bring forth fruit. Mm -hmm. The fruit of righteousness. And that's what Yahweh, oh, and I'm so thankful. Thank you, Father. I feel so much better. I promise you I do. <sighs> and I'm telling you, worrying is a weight. Oh, thinking is a weight. That's right. Because it takes you to so many different avenues and streets and roadblocks and these kind of things. But Yahweh has already showed us. He's, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. This is the way walking. Absolutely. And I, I'm just so thankful for Yahweh. I really am operating in me to recognize the power that we have. And oh talking about being able to overcome mm -hmm. okay. and you and uh, how y'all was showing too that um, it's a song that came up you don't uh, have to move the mountains but give me the strength really? to climb and I said Yahweh look at that look at that because your thoughts ain't nothing but a mountain full of confusion just over piling on top you know just a big mound of confusion when you just continuously and I'm telling you I was there I was like oh I just can't get it together I just gotta get it together and I said Yahweh you're gonna have to help me because I'm telling you, that's in obedience. And then Yahweh also showed us what was disobedient. Mm -hmm. To not believe him is disobedience. Mm -hmm. And if you, and uh, you, we have to trust Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh gets you to the point to where you ain't got no other hope but to trust him. What can you do about it? And make you say it out of your own mouth. Well, what can I do? You can't do nothing but give in to the power of Yahweh right there within yourself. You have to. It's, it's a fight to the finish. That's all. You, it's a fight to the finish. Every day. Every day that Yahweh wakes us up. He gives us the needed ammunition. Every day. Every day. Because like back here with the children of Israel, and I'm telling you, Yahweh was showing me all these, all of this. Everything that the children of Israel needed, Yahweh provided. Mm -hmm. Just like with us. Yahweh has already provided us everything. You just have to go through the process. In order, like the previous speaker, in order for you to be able to proceed. 
you must see that Yahweh has already made a way out of, although it was supposed to be a three days journey, look how long, but it was okay because Yahweh had already told them all that seek your life, they already did. Right. I am life. That's why you seek me. You don't seek after those things that are already dead. I've already destroyed that. Trust me. And that's what Yahweh is showing us now. You have to trust him in every aspect of your life, both spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, whatever it is, give it to Yahweh. And you have to trust and believe that he's already taken care of it. But it's that adversary's job to make you feel otherwise. Give me uh, Ephesians. Read that for me. Ephesians 6 and 10. Mm -hmm. Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. be strong in Yahweh mm -hmm. and in the power of his might. Okay. Put on the whole armor of Elohim. All right. He said, read the first part again. See, Yahweh is already right there describing himself unto you. Power. Read, read it again. Finally, my brethren. Yes. Be strong. Strength. In Yahweh. In Yahweh. And in the power. Power. Of his might. Of his might. Might is another attribute of Yahweh. See, Yahweh is mighty in everything. Keep on reading. Put on the whole armor of Elohim mm -hmm. that ye may be able to stand the wiles of the adversary. Right. For we wrestle mm. not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. But against principalities, mm -hmm. against power, mm -hmm. against the world rulers of this darkness. Okay. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. High places. Yeah. Right there within yourself. In your own consciousness. That's the fight right there. That's where you fight. It's not so much as on the outside of you, but see, we coming down into an ignorant state of mind. We fight, want to fight outwardly, but it's because you let these things in. That's where the fight is right there within you. Uh, go ahead, keep reading. Wherefore, mm -hmm. take unto you the whole armor of Elohim, mm -hmm. that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have an overcome to stand. To stand. Read. Stand therefore, mm -hmm. having your loins girt about with truth, mm -hmm. and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Mm -hmm. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the of the wicked. Okay. Now and take the helmet of salvation mm -hmm. and the sword of the spirit, mm -hmm. which is the, the word of Yahweh. All right. And that is the truth. That is the truth is the sword. It's able to cut down all the lies and the wickedness, all that that adversary tries to, what are the fiery darts? It's the thoughts. The fiery darts are the thoughts and the wickedness of the adversary. And you take on the whole armor, the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Knowing right there within yourself, Yahweh's already made a way. I'm already saved. That's the helmet. Being conscious of his ever presence right there within you, knowing that Yahweh has everything going on and I'm already saved if I believe. Read, I mean, get, oh, the uh, breastplate of righteousness, right? Now, this is what Yahweh showed me. I was going to go to Romans over there. I was talking about that, what the, um, about the enmity of uh, that one. Yes, it's at warfare with Yahweh. Yes. And we was talking about when you go into warfare, you have to have on this armor. You have, you don't go out there just, uh, hey, you know, you have to put on the armor. So first of all, right, you can't go out there naked, not in this world. Nah. But then you put on the whole armor of Yahweh. So he gives you the helmet of salvation. Having your conscious, having you conscious of his ever presence right there within you at all times knowing that you've already been saved. I've already, the battle is not yours. It's mine. Trust in me. All right. Then he told, he gives you the breastplate of righteousness. Having your heart 
and mind stayed on him at all times, knowing that whatever it is that Yahweh has going on, I'm all right, right there within him. With he and me and I and him, we been one, all right? Giving you the shield of faith to fight off the fire darts, trusting and having faith in the fact that whatever comes to me, I have faith that Yahweh is already fighting the battles. You can't, it can't touch me like it used to touch me because if you go out here naked, everything that that adversary throws at you, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel every bit of it. But Yahweh has given us the whole armor to where as of right now, if you're conscious of him right there within you, I know it, it, it don't sting as, as bad as it used to. It, it bounces off mm. because I know that Yahweh is with me and that this is his purpose. And Yahweh says, whatever it is, I, he puts no more on you than what you can handle. That's right. And that's what I have. Yahweh is making me understand that is my will is going to go according to my will. Mm -hmm. Right. All you have to do is trust and believe. And that's what the whole arm is all about, being covered in the knowledge of Yahweh right there within yourself, knowing that he is the ruler of both heaven and earth and everything must obey. Mm -hmm. Everything must obey. Even with, like Yahweh showing me too, how that when you plant a seed, you have the expectation that whatever I plant in this ground, in this soil, it's going to come up and it's going to bring forth, right? So whenever you put your trust in Yahweh, take root in him and know and know with the, and expect or anticipate that Yahweh has already, he's going to come bring forth right there within me. I have to bring forth the fruit that Yahweh uh, oh, is just beautiful. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I'm just thankful for Yahweh, especially right now in this very moment. I am truly thankful because it feels like the weight of whatever it is. <sighs> Because I know that Yahweh is real. I know that Yahweh is real. And you know that. I know that Yahweh is real. And he operates right there within you. You have to be conscious of his ever presence. And stop allowing this adversary to play these little games with you. Because that's all it is. Adversary trying to pull you out so that Yahweh can destroy you. Because Yahweh said, oh, I caught the middle of the scripture lesson, but I'm going to have to go back and read that because that was beautiful. Talking about the watchman. That's what it was all talking about. And so we have to be always looking to see what it is that Yahweh has for us, being obedient to his word. And I'm just thankful, Yahweh, for your ever presence and every aspect of our lives. We should always be thankful and looking for Yahweh to show us his power right there within us. So I'm just thankful unto Yahweh, and with these words, may Yahweh continue to bless you. Our final speaker will be our Dean, Dr. Carl Boston. enjoyed uh, the expressions this morning that Yahweh has uh, presented to us. Uh, I'm hoping that I can get through this. Now, concerning the things that was expressed this morning, I'm going to try to sum it all up. And I want to go back to the scripture lesson. In uh, Ezekiel, thirty-third chapter, and I want to pick it up. Pick it up at the fifth verse. This is Yahweh speaking to Ezekiel. Now I want to show you something about him too. 
and how Yahweh communicated with his uh, prophets and how he showed them things that they otherwise would not have known by vision and revelation. So let's pick it up there at the fifth verse. Now we're talking about the watchman. When you have Yahweh set up, if you set up a watchman over you, like the people out there in the church world, they pick and choose that preacher. Hmm. They choose that preacher. And if he's not preaching what they like, hmm. they give them another one. That similar to their own thinking. That's not how it is with Yahweh. The prophets didn't choose Yahweh. Right. Neither did the disciples choose the Messiah. Right. He chose them and put his spirit in them to declare the things that he had set for them to declare mm -hmm. unto his people. Right. So here's one example here uh, with Ezekiel. Read that. The fifth verse. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 33 and 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Now the trumpet is the gospel right. that's being preached. Right. See? Now if the trumpet sound and the people take not warning, then they are destroyed in their own iniquity. But if the watchman don't warn the people, the people still should be destroyed in their iniquity, but he require at the watch, that blood at the watchman's hand. So this is Yahweh warning to Ezekiel, as you fix to find out. Read. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Mm -hmm. So thou, O son of man. Now he's talking to Ezekiel. Now once he explained that to Ezekiel, now he's warning him that what he's telling him to go and preach, that's what he better do. Okay. Read. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Now you see, I have set you as a watchman to the house of Israel. Now I just gave you examples of what will happen if you don't tell the people what I said. Right. Okay. Now I have set you as a watchman over the people of Israel. Read. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. Right. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. At your hand, uh, Ezekiel, if you don't go and warn them with what I'm telling you. Now, hold that right there. Let's go to the 8th chapter. I'm just going to follow this right here. Start the first verse and pay attention to some of these things. I'll point them out as we go. And I want to get back to uh, what was said here this morning, if we have the time. But let's start the 8th chapter, first verse of Ezekiel. And pay attention to what you're reading. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of Yah Yahweh fell there upon me. Mm -hmm. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. From the appearance of his loins even downward, fire, and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. Now he's describing Yahweh in shape and form. That's the word that appeared unto him. As we discussed in other classes. This is how Yahweh make himself known to mankind. Read. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head. Now he put forth the form of a hand. Called him by the lock of his hair. See, so read. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, 
and brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem. Now he wasn't talking about his physical body went anywhere. Right. Right. See, he was caught up in the spirit. Right. And was carried to Jerusalem in the spirit while he still sat at home. You follow me? Right. Now he's having a vision. Read. Right. And brought me in the visions of Elohim to Jerusalem right. to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy? You see that? Now that's what he showed him that was sitting there. The seat. See, it was jealousy. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. That's a negative attribute. Right. Read. And behold, the glory, and behold, the glory of the Elohim of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, Seest thou what they do? See thou what now he's showing them a vision of, of what Israel was up to. Right. You know, sometimes you come to class and you say, Well, Yahweh, he must have been talking to me. Because <laughs> he hit right at home like what I was going through. And you would think, well, you know, the person that's speaking wasn't at home with you. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> See, so Yahweh sees and knows everything that we do. There's no way you can hide from him. There's no blackness or darkness. No, you understand? You just can't hide. There's nowhere to hide from Yahweh. Read. And he said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abomination. Now I'm going to show you greater abomination that they're doing. If you think that's bad, read. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abomination. Keep in mind, this is a vision that he's having. All this is occurring in the vision that he's having. Read. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked, wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, but portrayed upon the wall round about. Portrayed upon the walls round about. See, this is in the house of Yahweh now. All these images that they got on the wall that they had been worshiping and serving, which was an abomination to Yahweh. So he's showing all these things to Ezekiel so he could prophesy against them. Read. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? You see that? Right. <laughs> that was in the dark. They didn't think nobody would see them. See, we're just as ignorant as we can be. Uh, when we call ourselves worshiping Yahweh, we don't think he see and know everything that we do. There's no place, folks, again, that you can go and hide from him. Because everywhere you go, he's there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you understand? All right, read on. Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say... Yahweh seeth us not. Well, see, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. Yahweh don't see us. Mm -hmm. So they go to giving over to doing what they're doing. Because they think he don't see them. Read. 
Yahweh hath forsaken the earth. Yahweh don't hear, he ain't even on the earth no more. <laughs> See, they thought he was gone. Read. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. See, it can't get worse and worse. <laughs> see? Read. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of Yahweh's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there said women weeping for tans tans Tamas. Camera. Now you look at the margin of transgression. Uh, translation there, it says Adonis, which means Lord. Lord. Now here they were sitting in there in Yahweh's house weeping for the Lord. Wow. <laughs> Read. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than thee. It <laughs> can keep getting worse and worse. You see, read. And he brought me into the inner court of Yahweh's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of Yahweh, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Yahweh, and their faces toward now watch the this. east. 25 men with that back against it, turned against the temple of Yahweh. And what were they facing? And their faces toward the east. And they were facing toward the east. Read. And they worshiped the sun toward the east. And they worshiped the sun, the physical sun, right. toward the east, sitting in the temple of Yahweh with that back turned to him. Right. <laughs> See, now some of them don't think that would apply to us. Mm -hmm. But you're sitting in Yahweh's house or his temple now. You are the temple of Yahweh. You understand? First uh, Corinthians 3.16. First Corinthians 3.16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Yahweh. See, don't you know that you are the temple of Yahweh? You are. Mm -hmm. Read. And that the spirit of Yahweh dwelleth in you. And that Yahweh's spirit dwells in you. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we are the temple of Yahweh. Now we can come down here and call ourselves getting an understanding and then turn our back on Yahweh in his temple and begin to worship and serve idols. Or your imagination. Yourself. You understand? Read. If any man defile the temple of Yahweh, him shall Yahweh destroy. Now him shall Yahweh destroy. Now we went in the last class, we showed you what defiles the temple of Yahweh. And what comes out of the man, what comes out of his heart. See? Blasphemy, evil thoughts. Adultery, fornication, all those things come out of the man. That's what defiles the temple of Yahweh, as they were doing there. See, read. For the temple of Yahweh is holy, which temple ye are. Which temple you are. Now let's go back over there in Ezekiel. Uh, where I left off. Yeah. 817. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke, to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. Now pay attention. His eyes would not spare, neither will he have pity. Read. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice. And though they cry in my ear with a loud voice. Yet will I not hear them. I'm not going to hear them. See, because they turned their backs on him. And did opposite of what he asked them to do. That's why you have to be careful in your thoughts and following after your thoughts mm -hmm. and what you want to do. You better make sure it's in line with Yahweh's purpose and righteousness. Mm -hmm. We should not be out there committing iniquity. Mm -hmm. Now, let's switch gears. I want to get back to some of the things that 
was expressed here this morning that I want to touch on. Get Romans 115 or 116. Romans 1 16 for I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Now the gospel is in the 15th chapter of first uh, Corinthians the gospel is the death the burial the resurrection and ascension of the Messiah according to the scripture that's what the gospel is And when the gospel is preached unto you, the death, burial, and resurrection over and over again, and you catch it, then that Messiah then is resurrected in your dead conscience, right. where he was buried at, in you I'm talking about. Right. Right. <laughs> He's resurrected by this gospel in you. Because now you see how the purpose operate and function, then you see how the thing functioning in you. Through the preaching of this gospel. That's how you are resurrected. Mm -hmm. Or the Messiah in you is resurrected. You understand? By this gospel. Now, get the uh, Romans 5 and 12. First uh, Corinthians 15, 22. And the seventh chapter of Romans. Romans 5 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. All right, now let's go back here and deal with uh, what was said this morning. Let's start with uh, Genesis 1 26 and hold your finger there, and we'll get back to that. Now we're talking about Yahweh. Well, let's finish that in Romans because we didn't do that. Okay. And then come back. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into no, the world. No, 119 and 20. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believes. Now hold it there. Right. Now I said the gospel is the power, that's one of his attributes, of Yahweh to everyone unto right unto salvation to everyone that what so believe it. it so that's why when the Messiah uh, Yahweh is showing you the death burial and resurrection of the Messiah over and over and over all the way down through the scriptures then the power of that knowledge is what resurrects your conscience or you in your conscience unto salvation and you begin to follow after that that's the power in this gospel or this truth. Read. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. To the Jew first, then to the Gentile. Why to the Jews first? Because they were under this old covenant here. They're the one that had the law. So he had to fulfill and take it off them in order for them to enter into the grace or to come in by faith. See? That's why he said to the Jew first, then to the Gentile. Read. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith. Mm -hmm. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven against all impiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Because that which may be known of Yahweh. Now, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them is manifested in them the Jews why because Yahweh showed it unto them so they had that knowledge that's what was manifested in them the knowledge of Yahweh and how he operated and functioned he made his ways known to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel they saw the situation they were in down there in Egypt you understand? They know Moses came down with the name and signs to, the, uh, to show them that he had met with Yahweh, that no gods down there in Egypt could uh, withstand what Yahweh was pouring out on them. Matter of fact, he destroyed all the gods down there and Pharaoh and his hosts, you see, down here in Egypt. Now they saw that. 
they saw and understood when they told to take out this lamb and they got instruction for it. At that time, they were unaware that that lamb was talking about the Messiah that was to come. They didn't know that at that time, but that's what that was pointing to. The death of that lamb, them being buried in the Red Sea, and then resurrected out here in the wilderness, talking about the death, burial, and resurrection of the Messiah. They didn't know that, that they was already manifesting those things. But they saw Yahweh depart the Red Sea. They saw the miracles that he performed down here in Egypt, so they understood that. They get out here in the wilderness, you understand, and by the way, that lamb that they ate down there in, in, in uh, Egypt came right on out the behind <laughs> on that way into the wilderness, you understand? That's not what, that's not in itself is what delivered them. But by them obedient, obedient and partaking of the lamb was symbolic of the Messiah. But that physical lamb passed on out of them on the way. You follow? So they gathered around this mountain and that cloud that was leading them, they saw that too. You see, they saw the Red Sea being parted. They saw Yahweh fought the battles and tearing off the chariot wheels of Pharaoh and his host while the, the east wind was drying up this ground so they can go through on dry ground. They saw those things. They saw and partook of the manner that Yahweh rained down from heaven. When they complained about that, not having meat, Yahweh brought quail down low where they can get them. He had, they had clothes that never wore out the whole 40 years they was out there. The clothes never wore out. So they saw those. They was armed with that knowledge, but it didn't do them no good because it went in one ear and came out the other. As the, uh, Isaiah wrote, I believe, they were broken cistern. They couldn't hold no water. Right. You understand? It didn't, it didn't, it wasn't real in them. Right. And so they saw that. You see, it's what we're talking about and what Paul is talking about there in Romans. Read. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. For he showed it to them. Read. For the invisible things of him. For the invisible things, see? Now this tabernacle that was constructed down here, that Yahweh got in Bezalel and, 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 and them and the women there to build the curtains and the boards and the pillars and all that to this tabernacle. Now this was a physical manifestation of the invisible tabernacle, which was Yahweh Lord. So the invisible things of him, you understand, was seen by the things that he made. And this is what he's expressing here, read. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. So the invisible things of him from the creation of the world being understood, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that he made. Mm -hmm. Now Genesis 1 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Hold it right there. I also get Proverbs 8.22. Now, Yahweh has to take on shape and form, and what we have with these attributes of Yahweh came into an organized shape and form of a man without flesh and blood. So when he said, let us, he's talking to wisdom. He's talking to knowledge. He's talking to beauty. Just, that's what he's speaking to. Let us, because that's what took on form. So he said, let us make man in our likeness and in our image. Now that's one way you can look at it. Now the other way you can look at it is this, Proverbs 8.22. Proverbs 8:22. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Now this is the Messiah speaking. He said, Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Read. I, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Read on. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, 
Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Well, now we're talking about the Messiah now. This is before he come down and died on the cross. Mm -hmm. This is when Yahweh conceived him. In the very beginning, before he uh, created anything. That's what you're hearing here. Read. When there are no depths, I was brought forth. When there are no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. And I said, when he, he who? Yahweh Elohim. When he prepared the heaven, Yahshua was right there. Where was he at? He was in the bosom of the Father. Observing everything that he was doing. See? So now, you can look at it as the attributes, which are the same as this, or you can look at it as Yahweh Elohim and his Messiah. Say, let us, son, make a man in our likeness and in our image. That's what he said. Read on there in Genesis. And Elohim said, let us make... Well, hold up. Finish that in, uh, in, in Proverbs, then. then we go to Genesis. 827. When he prepared the heavens, I was there when he said... A See, when he prepared the heavens, Joshua was right there with the Father, in the bosom of the Father. Matter of fact, so much so that he is the Father. That's right. And the Father is the Son. Right. But once he took on the form, or once he created it, then it was separate from himself. Even though it was still a unity, when you say Son, that's different from the Father. But in substance, they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. Are y'all getting this? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, read on. When he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him. Now he said, I was by him as one brought up with him. So when Yahweh took on, after he conceived everything, including the Messiah, the Messiah was the first thing conceived, then the rest of the creation. So he was the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. And so when Yahweh did, coming to the shape and form, then the sun came right up with him. See, and that's the us that he's talking about there in Genesis. Read Genesis 1, 26. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea. Now hold up, slow that down. He said, let us make man. Mm -hmm. He didn't say men. He said man, singular. Mm -hmm. Listen, in our likeness and in our image and let them, you understand? <laughs> Rule. Now who's the them? Wisdom. The woman Eve was in Adam. Just like the creation was in him. The creation represents the woman. That's these attributes in an organized form. See? So Eve being representative of the creation is in the man, just like the creation was in Elohim, when Yahweh formulated it back here and took on form, the concept of it was in him. You follow that now? That's what Eve's representing, taking the natural things that he made to understand the invisible things that you can't see. So he made a natural man to point to the invisible man. You follow that now? Adam was created from the dust of the ground. I'm talking about a physical man would point to this invisible man. And he had the head, arms, and all of that just like him. Read on. And let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So he gave the man dominion over everything that he made. I'm the creator. Read. So Elohim created man in his image, 
in the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he him. Now he created the man, both male and female, listen, in his likeness and in his image. You understand? So one would, would, would deduce from that then, if, if he created Adam in his likeness and image, and Adam was both male and female, then they would deduce that the creator himself was both male and female. That's how they would look at that. And that wouldn't be wrong to a certain degree, you see. But what Yahweh is demonstrating with the physical, to point to the invisible, you see, the male and the female is talking about source and substance. Right. Now let's get the substance of Yahweh and show you the feminine part of it. Let's go back to Proverbs, start at the first verse, 8 and 1. Proverbs 8 and 1. Does not wisdom cry? Now he said, does not wisdom cry? And understanding put forth her voice. Now why he call understanding her? Hmm. Does not understand and put forth her voice. See, Yahweh's attributes, these, they, they, they speak. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have a mouth to speak. You understand? He put forth her voice. Talk about understanding. That's the feminine part of Yahweh. That's the substance. Intelligence, that's the source. That's the Father himself. The source of everything. He's the source of knowledge. The source of wisdom. The source of love. He's the source of everything. Do you understand? He's also the substance by which all things are made. So he's the source and substance of male and female. Is what the, you understand? So the male and female is talking about source and substance. You follow that now? Read on there. She standeth in the top of high places by the way in the places of the paths. She cries at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the door. Mm -hmm. Unto you, O men, I call. Now hold up. <laughs> See, now you done switched it. He said wisdom was crying and understanding was put forth her voice. Now Yahweh is saying, unto you, O men, I call. Mm -hmm. Showing you that he is the wisdom that he's talking about. He is that understanding mm -hmm. that was calling unto the man to bring them into uh, salvation. See, read. And my voice <laughs> is to the sons of man. O ye simple, <laughs> understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. Mm -hmm. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. See, wickedness is an abomination to Yahweh's lips. Another thing, too, Yahweh don't do evil. Mm -hmm. He don't do it. You understand? Now somebody was reading that Bible where Yahweh, where it says that uh, Yahweh uh, brought evil upon them. Because of what they were, the evil that they were doing, Yahweh brought evil on them. Now I just said Yahweh don't do no evil. See? Now one would think that's a contradiction. But when you really look at it and get in there, was it evil for Yahweh to dispense evil on those that were committing evil? Was it evil for him to do that? By no means. So then, like I said, he don't commit evil. Mm -hmm. See, what he do, he fight fire with fire. Mm -hmm. Evil with evil. If you were doing evil, then Yahweh would cause evil to come upon you as a chastisement. But that don't make him evil or him doing evil. You understand? That's a righteous thing for him to do. So it's impossible for Yahweh to do evil mm -hmm. or to commit iniquity. That's an impossibility. Read on. They are plain to him. Uh, eighth verse. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. See that now? All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. Read. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. There is nothing forward or perverse in what I'm saying. That's Yahweh speaking. Read. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. Receive. Hold up. Now that's explain what I just got through saying. <laughs> See? They're all plain to him that what? Understand it. 
And what? And write to them that find knowledge. See? So when you find out knowledge, you find it's a righteous thing for Yahweh to do what he did. That's right. You follow it now? Mm -hmm. See? I can look at it now and say, oh, yeah, you were right, Yahweh. <laughs> You were right in doing that. Just like he was right in, in causing evil to come upon Israel for their sins. Right. He was right for doing that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, read on. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. Now he said receive my instruction and receive knowledge rather than choice gold or money. See, because the money fades away. Mm -hmm. You'll die and leave that for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You understand? You can't take that with you. Now the Egyptians thought they could. Right. That's why you got men over there now digging them up. Right. Them and their money. <laughs> Putting it in museums. King Tuck was one of them. See he died and had all his money buried with him and even had his servants buried with him so that he would have someone to serve him in the resurrection. And that was his thinking. But when they got him up out that grave <laughs> and put him in the museum <laughs> you understand? And took all his wealth and gold he had down there. You see what I'm talking about? Now where is he going to end up at in the resurrection? In hell. I can tell you right now. The way he already is. Read. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell with prudence. Now hold it right there. Now he's gone first person. It's wisdom speaking now. Say so I wisdom. Look at the word prudence. I dwell with prudence. <laughs> Read. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. And I find out knowledge of witty inventions. That's some deep stuff right there. See, wisdom is seeking those things out. Now, if you go to the third chapter of Proverbs, it'll give you a better understanding of the operation and function of wisdom, what it does. <laughs> now, the wisdom seek out witty inventions and things to do to please Yahweh. See, you have to understand the context of this. Yahweh is ever creating, you see. Now, he's not creating the same things twice. Ain't no pleasure in that. He's not fooled by these things. Yahweh is intelligent, you understand? So these things are done for his pleasure. It don't look like that with all that you see going on down here. But I want you to understand Yahweh is in everything that is made. Thing, everything that you see and don't see. It is him in one form or another. Read. The definition. Read on. You got the definition? Read it. Prudence. Prudence is care, caution, and good judgment as well as wisdom in looking ahead. In looking ahead into the future things, see? Read that again. Prudence is care. Is care. Caution. Caution. And good judgment as well as wisdom in looking ahead. Now, the so eye wisdom dwell with prudence. Mm -hmm. In other words, he was looking ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. Caution. Taking good care. Mm -hmm. You understand? And what he was pronouncing and what he was doing. Because that's Yahweh, see? Read. Caution with regard to practical matters. Mm -hmm. Regard for one's own interest. <laughs> All right, let's go back over there and finish that up in Proverbs. Well, first, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty invention. Mm -hmm. The fear of Yahweh is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. Now, Yahweh said he hate that. Read. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. Now, you I see, he's telling you what he is. Mm -hmm. I am under. He's understanding itself. Mm 
So when you receive understanding, that's him coming in unto you. In other words, we got to have a double portion of the spirit. The spirit of Yahweh already dwelled in you, but you don't have access to it because you didn't know anything about it. But the truth, which is the Holy Spirit, when it comes, it connects you to him in you. That's how you become one with it. You follow that now? That's what the Holy Spirit job is. Wow. Mm, I can't do that right now. But let's get back over here to Genesis. And uh, I want to show you, finish this up. Genesis 1.27. So Elohim created man in his image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he him. And Elohim blessed him. And Elohim said unto him, Be fruitful and multiply. Now how are he going to do that? How is Adam going to be fruitful and multiply with Eve inside of him? So in order to even carry out that commandment, the woman has to be separated from the man. And he has to go in unto her. Now you say you take the natural to understand the invisible, right? Now what is Yahweh demonstrating here? <coughs> By taking the woman out of the man. See? Now, Eve being taken out of Adam, I told you that represents the substance mm -hmm. of the man. See? And he took the rib and the womb and closed up the flesh. Now he said, this is not bones of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Uh, this is spirit of my spirit. You follow? She shall be called womb man because she was taken out of the man. Now in order for Adam to procreate or to do what Yahweh said by being fruitful and multiply, they couldn't do that in the garden because the garden represents heaven. There's no sex in the garden. There's no sex going on in heaven. You understand? No intercourse in at all from a physical point of view going on in heaven. So in order for that to take place, they had to come down. Yahweh had already set up a way for them to get down. Now he had created that adversary and he had entered into the garden unbeknownst to Adam and Eve. You see? Now, while he was there, talking about Satan, in the garden, he had nothing to oppose because Yahweh hadn't given that commandment to Adam at the time. But when Yahweh gave that commandment to Adam and told him of all the trees in the garden he could freely eat, but the trees in the midst don't touch unless you die, that's when Satan rose up. Now he got something to oppose. Now he didn't go to Adam because Adam represents the Messiah. He didn't go to him. He went to the woman, the weaker vessel, which represents the creation. That's why it says Satan deceived the whole world or he deceived the woman. Let me put this on you too. When Eve partook of that transgression back there and she was deceived and gave to Adam, that was the whole world. That's right. Right there. That's right. That was deceived. And everyone that came forth from them came in with a call of mind or deceived because they had no idea where they came from or what the purpose of Yahweh is, you see. So then, in order for Adam to bring forth, he got to go in unto his wife. First she was in him, didn't have no problem. Once she was taken out, now he got to come together with himself. Eve is Adam. That's the feminine part of the man. So he got to come together with himself in order to create or procreate. Just like Yahweh Elohim had to come together with himself. He had to speak to knowledge and wisdom and understanding in order to bring forth. That's the substance. That's the woman. See? He had to come together with his substance in order to bring forth. In other words, he had to command wisdom and knowledge to, to bring forth. Uh, I think it's in the third chapter of Proverbs. It said, well, Yahweh by wisdom founded the earth. By his knowledge, the death was broken up. By his understanding... You see, these things were done. And so all of these attributes of Yahweh is what he commanded to take on form and to be all that you see here, including you. I hope this is getting across to you. Sometimes we teach and sometimes we preach. 
although true teaching is preaching though you see but sometimes we have to do it like this uh, now let's get the seventh chapter but let's go to Romans 5 and 12 first wow time to run out on me <coughs> wherefore uh, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned now you see that the death that fell upon Adam that came upon all men for all had sinned see when Adam sinned every man and woman and child that was to come forth in this world was in Adam that's where it began. So when he sinned, the whole world sinned. Right. That's why the Messiah come in and died to take away the sins off the world so that they could come unto him through, through faith and belief. See, that's how you was to enter back in. The first Adam was of the earth, earth, and the second Adam is Joshua from heaven. This Adam was talking about this Adam. You see, uh, 1 Timothy 2.15 1 Timothy 2.15 2.14 2.13 For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Right. Well now I want y'all to remember this when you start dealing with that Tetragrammaton and Jehovah when they got the E before the A. Right. So that's one you can go to to show that Adam was first formed, then the woman. You understand? All right, go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Now see, Adam wasn't deceived. You understand that? Eve was deceived. Adam was not. He knew what that woman had done. Read. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Now the woman being deceived, she was in the transgression. Now what Adam did when Eve come to him, he knew what she had done because she had the fruit in her hand to give to him to eat. You understand? So when he saw that, he willfully partook of it and died for his bride. Because, see, she couldn't be coming down into the world, and he stayed in the garden. Right. <laughs> you understand? So they had to come on down, out of the garden, which represents heaven, in order to uh, fulfill that commandment that Yahweh gave Adam was to be what? Fruitful and multiply. They couldn't do that in the garden. Because they weren't in the flesh when they was in the garden. Even though they had a body, flesh and body on, they weren't in the flesh psychologically. They was in the spirit psychologically. But when the commandment came, sin revived and they died mm -hmm. in their conscience. That's where the death took place, in the conscience of the man. And so that's where it had to be resurrected at, is in your conscience. Mm -hmm. You see, that's how the thing is working. So all died in Adam. All are made alive in Yahshua the Messiah. Finish that up. Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And death by sin. So by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. Now what is the world? Mm -hmm. Wow. The Yahweh put the world in the man. Mm -hmm. That's Ecclesiastes 3 and 8. And he put the world in the man so that the man could not find out the things that he had done from start to finish. So when he said put the world in the man, see all that you see out here, all that pertains to this, was in the man's conscience. That's all he could see. In other words, he look up and see a physical sun. He see a physical heaven. He couldn't see the spirit of the thing. That's right. Of where it come from. He was looking at the physical or the natural. You see? And so the world that he walked around in was in him. So there was no way for him to see and understand spiritual things because he's looking at the thing that's in him. <laughs> you see? And thinking that this was real. And let me fix that one. This is real in the sense that it's a real type and shadow. It's not real in terms of Yahweh 
being reality itself. That's the only thing that's truly real. And what makes this appear to be real is the spirit of Yahweh that has taken on these forms. That's what give it the life that it has. Read. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. See, you can't charge nobody with sin if you ain't got no law. You hadn't transgressed no law. So they couldn't be charged. Read. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, mm -hmm. who is the figure of him that was to come. So that first man, Adam, was a figure of this one that was to come. So if he died for his bride, then he got to come in and die for his bride, his bride being the creation itself, all that's in it. That's right. See? Read. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Mm -hmm. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of Yahweh and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahshua the Messiah, hath abounded unto me. Right, so if death come in by one, then life come in by the Messiah. And that's what he said, I am the truth, the way, and I am the life. Adam, when he died, see, you understand, that's when life was taken from the earth, or from the world. You see, it's when Adam died in this country. Life is restored when the Messiah come in and poured out the truth of the Holy Spirit. That established life on earth in all those that he had called. See, this is the last scripture, and I know I'm skipping around. Uh, eighth chapter of uh, Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. Well, you know what? Let's back up to the seventh chapter. Pick it up uh, about the 10th, 12th verse in there. Hmm? Ten. Eight. Nine. 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 Okay. <laughs> Actually, seventh verse. <laughs> seventh verse. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? By no means. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. You didn't know what a sin was, except the law pointed it out. Say, <laughs> so read. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not covet. See, I wouldn't have known that. I would have thought that was okay to go to covet another man's wife. A girlfriend, you see? But the law said that that was wrong. So if I went ahead and did it anyway, that would make it exceedingly sinful. Because he told you not to do that. Mm. See, he read. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive. See that now? Without the law, Sin was dead. Now he's talking about what took place back in the garden. That's what Paul is talking about. Now he said, I was alive without the law once. But when the Hold up. If you were looking at the Ten Commandment law, that if you think that's what he's talking about, mm -hmm. see, Paul hadn't been born yet when this law was given. Do you understand? He wasn't born when this law was given. So for him to say, I was alive without the law once, he had to be looking all the way back to the garden. When he was alive in Adam, before Adam died. Remember? And Adam all died. That's what Paul is looking at. He was alive without the law once. Before Yahweh gave that law, he was alive in Adam. But when the law came, sin revived and he died in Adam. All men died in Adam. That's 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam all died. And the Messiah shall all be made alive. That's what the Apostle Paul is talking about. Read. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taken occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. 
was then that which is good made death unto me? By no means, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. No, because he told you not to, mm -hmm. and you did. I know the Creator told you not to do it. Now, if he hadn't said nothing and you did it, then you wouldn't have been charged like that. Uh, you'd have still sinned, but it wouldn't have been exceedingly sinful. But since you, he told you not to do it and you did it anyway, that's what made it exceedingly sinful because that was a commandment from the Creator himself. Read. For we know that the law is spiritual. Now, keep that one in mind. The law has never been physical. The law is spiritual. But we are carnal, mm -hmm. sold under sin. Mm -hmm. See, read. For that which I do, I know not why. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. That's what I find myself doing. See, read. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Read. <clears throat> now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. See, it's no longer me that's doing it, because see, I don't really want to be doing that. So in that I don't have control over it, and I can't bring myself to do what's right, then it's no longer me, but it's the sin that's dwelling in me that's causing the problem. That's why it had to be cast out. See, read. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Now he said he knew that. That in my flesh it dwelleth no good thing. So I know ain't nothing good in me, I'm nothing good about me. You, that's the first thing you got to come to. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. For the will to do good is present with me. The will to do good is present with you. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Read. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. That's what I find myself doing. Well, what's the problem? Read. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Read. I find then a law. Now, you say, I find then a law. That when I would do good. Now, what law is that? It's the law of sin and death. Yeah. That's what was operating in him. He said, I find then a law that when I would do good, read. Evil is present with me. Evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. Mm -hmm. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Now there's another law in his members. That's the law of sin and death that was warring against his mind so that when he would do good, then that law of sin and death would bring him into subjection unto it, and he find himself doing what he didn't want to do. You follow that now? That's as a result of this transgression that fell upon Adam. Read. And bringing me into captivity. And bringing me into captivity. To the law of sin which is in my memory. Read. O wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? That's right, read. Thanks be to Yahweh. Thanks be to Yahweh. I have delivered. I have deliverance. Through Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. Which is the truth. So then. So then. With the mind, I myself serve the law of Yahweh. Now with my mind now, I serve the law, the spirit law of Yahweh. While my flesh is subject to the law of sin. While my flesh is still subject to the law of sin. Read. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now then, once that process take place, mm -hmm. there is therefore now no condemnation. Which are in Yahshua the Messiah. To those who are in Yahshua the Messiah. Who walk not after the flesh. Who don't walk after the physical flesh. But after the spirit. But you walk after the spirit. You walk after knowledge and after understanding. That's what you're seeking now. Mm -hmm. You're not seeking physical pleasures mm -hmm. as you did before. Read, I'll call a pledge, let me put it that way. Read. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. That's what set us free from the law of sin and death which was in our members. That was controlling us. See, when we would do good, evil was present to get us to go the opposite of what we would have done. You understand that? Read. For what the law could not do 
In that it was weak through the flesh. See, this law back here was weak through the flesh. They were yep. told not to do that, but they had nothing in them to cause them to do right. So it was weak through the flesh. Read. Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh because of sin to condemn sin in the flesh. Mm -hmm. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Well, see, that's plain. Those that are after the flesh, that's all they mind. That's all their thoughts are about, the things of the flesh. So you read. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Read. For to be carnally minded is death. To be carnally minded. See, they didn't know this out there. Mm -hmm. They thought death was when the spirit leaves the body. And they haul this thing off to put it in a hole in the ground. That's, that is a death. Mm -hmm. But there are two. One is talking about the other. There's a psychological and spiritual death. There's a physical death. Now remember, Yahweh told Adam that in the day that he touched, he was sure to die, didn't he? Right. Say, in the day that you touched. But Adam lived to be 930 years. You follow? 930 years old. Now you have to understand by the day of Yahweh, what that's talking about. Let me do this right quick, then I'm going to be through. Get uh, 2 Peter 3 and 8. 2 Peter 3 and 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now this is prophetic time with Yahweh. To him one day is the same as a thousand years. And a thousand years with Yahweh is the same as one day. So you take the day of Yahweh, which is a thousand years, Adam being 930, he fell 70 years short of that one day with Yahweh physically. But he died instantly in his conscience the day that he partook of that transgression. So he died twice, a psychological death and a physical death. Now, what has to happen with us, we have to be resurrected psychologically and spiritually before a physical death occur. And if you don't be resurrected before the physical death occur, then you are lost eternally. I want to shut it off here, folks. I hope you got some out of it. I know it was all over the place. But I thank you. May Yahweh bless you. Uh. Are there any questions? Any comments? so I can give it to Margaret um, in Albuquerque. So after class, you can kind of let me know if you plan on going. Again, the rooms are $99 a night, so it's a Friday, Saturday, we check out Sunday, so it's $200 plus tax for the room. And I did find flights from Jackson to Albuquerque for 388 round trip, so that's actually not bad at all. Leaving that Friday, coming back on that Sunday. Um, so if I can get a head count and let them know who all to expect, even if you hadn't booked it yet, I still need to know if you plan on going because they want to get a head count first so they can kind of get everything together with the room and get everything prepared. And we will have a conference call tonight. Any other announcements? These conference calls we were having uh, every Sunday before the past season started, so we're getting ready to start it back up. And we have participation from people all over, uh, different schools, Florida, New York, Chicago, uh, Mexico, uh, Texas, all call in on this call, and we have class. 
and we have certain matters that we get into or if anybody got something they want to explain or get into, then we do that. Uh, so if you want to participate in the conference call, those are the numbers that you call. And that's the number that you call. And, uh, you can't get in. If you have any questions, you can ask your questions. Or something that you don't understand, you can ask about that. Um, tonight we'll be questions and answers. Are there any other comments? If not, let everyone stand for Doc Sox. <laughs> Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory for exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all times, now and forever. Let us all say, Hallelujah.